it on corn. And it'll be all right for a second on barley. And it's basically a full bucket. And that's empty. And, oh, no more scratch grain. All right. Hey, how's it going guys? It's, uh, it's been a long time <laughs> uh, since I've seen you guys. Um, yeah, sorry about that. It's, um, if, if you've been watching or following along on our channel for, oh, I don't know, the, the last few weeks or so, um, you know that there's been, there, there was a, a death of um, a very close member in, in our family. Um, it was uh, my side of the family. That's uh, partly why you haven't seen me so much. Trying to get back into it and making a little bit more videos. And one of the nice things is that it's getting to be springtime and it, 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 uh, it came at a good time this year. Um, just gonna start getting outside a little bit more and uh, that always means, you know, nice time being out in the fresh air, in the sunshine, you know, kinda, it, it can make you feel like you've got a new lease on life. But right now I'm going to be heading to the feed store because it looks like we're out of a couple things. And then I wanted to give you guys a quick update of uh, some of our animals because it's been a while. That scratch is a little bit more pricey than... I thought I remembered. Maybe not. It's just been a while. I was, uh, they, were, they were saying it was about $20, $25, I think, for a couple bags of the scratch grain. Seems a little steep, but I guess that, that's the price that you pay for, for good farm, farm fresh eggs, I suppose. The chickens are, are picking up laying, so that's awesome. Something I want to mention right quickly, though, while, I, while I've got you here. If you're keeping chickens and you are feeding them some kind of grain, it really helps to soak your feed. I remember my mom saying a long time ago when she would cook up things like barley or wheat or any, any kind of grain, it seems like, that she was preparing, she would always try to uh, soak the grain because it really helps with our digestion, uh, our, our digestion as well. Same thing with the chickens. If you soak your feed, it does go a lot further if you soak your feed just because it swells up. It doesn't take as much to fill their quota of feed. But another thing that it does is it helps, um, I don't know, release some of the nutrients in the grain and it, uh, breaks that grain down just a little bit for the chickens before they ever eat it. So it's really good for the chicken's digestion if you can soak your grain first. It's looking like I need to fill up the water just a little bit in this bucket. It's looking a little dry. Oh, another thing to keep, that you do need to keep in mind though, if you soak your feed, is you wanna make sure that your feed stays uh, covered with the liquid that sort of seals it off from any air which can introduce you know different bacteria and actually can lead to mold growing on the inside of your bucket and you don't want that we've actually had that before if you if we let it sit dry with grain exposed for too long so make sure if you soak your feed to just cover it over the top with water every time you get done dishing it up for the, your animals enough about that it's dark in here let's uh, let's get outside where it's a little bit lighter how are you guys doing today? You doing all right? Besides loud. Looks like we'll need to get you another flake for nighttime, huh? How are you doing on water? Oh. Rach, just refill you guys. Uh, first off, let's talk about these goats. These, uh, they're, I think they're, they're enjoying coming out of the, the winter time a little bit. They're not 
I feel like they're not eating as much as they have been. It might just be because it's getting warmer, but on the other hand, they still seem to be loving the grain that we give them every night. I don't know whether or not you can tell. This one specifically, uh, this one right here, we call this one horseshoe. She has, I think she's surpassed her mom over here. She's surpassed Millie in size. She has just gotten enormous. We are scheduled to uh, be done with these guys uh, shortly, but that will be for another video. But uh, so far, so good. I think they've actually maintained their health pretty darn well through the winter, no major issues. Except for some of this growth here on the, the side of their neck. It's mostly noticeable in the two older ones. See that wider, that lighter colored fluffier stuff on the sides of their neck? It almost looks like cottony, like uh, sheep's wool would look, almost. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's so fluffy, it almost looks like you could run your fingers through it and just brush it right out, but I don't know what that is. Any of you guys who have owned goats, uh, if you guys know what that is, would you leave a comment down in the comment section below? I just don't have... I, I have no way of guessing what that even is, if that's a good thing or if that's normal. <laughs> but other than that, you guys are doing all right, huh? Isn't it getting a little cold out here for you guys? No. Hi. What are you doing? We're building a microbium. You're what? We're building a microbium. What's that? It's sort of like an animal reserve, except for like really, really, really tiny animals. Say... I don't know, bugs, like a bug animal or something. Hey, right. give me my knife. I knew that. It's dead. It's... All right, moving on to the chickens. There's a ton of roosters. <laughs> I was trying to count them the other day. I think we've got five, maybe six roosters, uh, including the, the one alpha. Sounds like that one uh, kind of exotic one, that one that we called Eagle, is, he's really learned to express himself he's getting a lot more comfortable with his crowing but he seems like a mean rooster and we've only got i think around 30 ish in that mark uh chickens all together that's including the roosters and of those 30 again there was like six roosters that's way that that ratio is way off roosters to hens so we're gonna be needing to cull those guys soon likely gonna be some of the meaner ones like that guy, that one. Look at all these over here. There's one, two, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. There's five of the roosters that need going. One of these first days, I think I'd like the weather to get just a touch warmer and I'll go ahead and cull those guys. We might end up bottling them just in case they're overly tough. They're a little bit they're, they're not old, but they are roosters, so just to make sure that they're tender, we'll go ahead and bottle them. But despite the kind of off ratio of chickens to roosters, the hen's egg production has picked up a little, or quite a bit, actually. Now that the days have started to get a little bit longer, I still need to, oof, I still need to clean out these laying boxes. But yeah, they've gotten, they've gotten a little bit better. That, that ought to continue to go up after... I call the roosters. You guys all getting ready to hunker down for the night? This is their <laughs> hangout spot where they all like to come in. Eventually they will go into the coop, but they all like to congregate here first. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe this is where they take roll call to make sure everybody's here before they all go in. Don't want to leave anybody behind, huh? Still loving this collection of chickens though. You know, they, they have been a very hardy group. Haven't had to deal with a sick chicken uh, this whole winter. Usually we lose at least one chicken over the course of a winter. So we're very pleased that we haven't had to put any of them down or that we haven't had to bury any of them. That's been awesome. Looks like three eggs today, so that's cool. But besides that, um, been trying to keep them healthy with vinegar in the water, nothing super fancy. Every once in a while we'll give them a sprinkle of garlic powder in with their water as well, but Usually it's just the vinegar, which really helps boost their immune system. Oh, one thing that I'd like to show you, look at this. Look at what they've been doing out here in the garden. You, I think they know that it's been, they, it's been getting warmer. They have just been going to town 
They've really picked up scratching away in the garden. They've been making holes just everywhere, digging, and they're, I think they're really loving how the ground has been softening up. And uh, I don't know, maybe it's bringing some of the bugs to the surface, and they've been noticeably busier <laughs> these last couple days. It's really fun to watch. I always get a kick out of watching that, no matter how many years we've been keeping chickens. That's always fun. And that about does it for our animal update. Not actually a whole lot has changed now that I think about it, which, which can be a good thing. No news is good news, right? We'll let you know what, uh, what comes of these goats. Looking forward to uh, taking care of them here shortly. Thank you guys so much for joining us for another video on our homemade homestead channel. Uh, thank you so much to all the new subscribers. Welcome to all you guys. It's just been insane how many uh, subscribers we've had lately. So thank you guys for that. We really appreciate it. Continue to share us on your social media. We also appreciate that. Leave a comment down in the comment section below. We love talking to you guys. It's It, it really is a high point of our day. But we're going to call it at that. And uh, we hope to see you again real soon in the next video. Take it easy. You guys getting cold yet? No, not yet. You getting cold? No. <laughs> I decided not to have uh, geysers in my microbium. Oh. Um, do any of you guys know Old Faithful? That's a geyser. That's a geyser. Are you going to make Old Faithful out of your structure here? Are you going to put Old Faithful here in your structure? No, because I don't want geysers in it. Oh, right. Good call.